Hi everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I'm actually a chemistry and physics teacher. But I've not taught physics for a very long time now. The last time I taught physics was in 2011, term 1 only. That is immediately after qualifying as a teacher. But recently I was transferred to a different school and in this school I was thrown into the deep end of physics. I was honest with my students and I told them that I have not taught physics for about 10 years now. But I was also quick to remind them that physics had only hibernated in me for all these years. And the very first thing that we were doing in that school in physics form 2 was waves 1. And I was using this gadget here known as a slinky spring to explain some phenomenon about waves. This slinky spring can be used to demonstrate what we call the transverse waves. There we go. Whereby the displacement of the particles is perpendicular to the movement of the wave. It can also be used to demonstrate the longitudinal waves where the movement of the wave is in the same direction with the displacement of the particles. It can also be used to demonstrate Hooke's law, where if I was to extend this spring beyond the elastic limit, this spring would not come back to its original shape. There are a few other things, but what we were looking with my students is how this slinky spring falls when released. And I'd like you to also answer this question. Option number A. When I release this spring, will it fall directly as it is, such that the lower end meets the ground first, and then this other part to follow it later? Option number B. When I release this spring, will the lower end wait for the upper part to fall first so that now they can fall together? Option number C. When I release this spring, will the lower end come up and then the upper part come down so that they meet somewhere in the middle and then they fall together? Comment down below with either A, B or C as you wait for me to give us the correct answer. When the spring is released, the fall happens so fast within about 250 milliseconds. That's about a quarter of a second or the time it takes for one to blink their eye. And for one to record that kind of speed, you need a camera that is shooting at about 300 frames per second. But what I have here is a camera, an ordinary phone camera, that is shooting at 30 frames per second. I therefore had to show the result of this experiment to my students from a YouTuber known as Veritasium. I hope by now you have also answered the question. And this is the result. <music>
or racket games. If this is a racket bat and you're playing a game of table tennis or lawn tennis, when you hit the ball, by the time that information travels from the point of impact all the way to your hand, so that you can know that you have actually hit the ball, the ball is almost crossing the net. Or if it is a game of golf and you have hit the ball, now by the time that information travels from the point of impact all the way to your hand, the ball is about 25 meters away from you. It almost seems instant or instantaneous, but actually it takes some time before that information travels. Now, for a takeaway assignment, if somebody touches you or pinches you or hits you, how long does it take for that information to reach your brain so that you can actually know that somebody hit you? I've left a link on the description box on Veritasium's video so that you can get more explanation about this subject. Thank you so much. I'm out.